Nestleds, welcome back. This video, we are going to be talking about the nested for loop. And essentially, a nested for loop is a for loop inside of another for loop. And it can be used to create, out, create output like this. So I want you guys to look at that while I take a drink. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Well, that's some good stuff. That's almost as good as the content inside of my C programming crash course, which you guys are definitely going to want to check out. Link in the description. So, what is going on here? Well, why would you want to do something like this anyways? We're counting down from this number, and this number counts up each time. So, kind of pointless, yeah, I know. But this is actually really useful once we get into, like, multidimensional arrays and stuff like that. You're going to need for loops inside of for loops. Because if you think about it, what is a for loop inside of a for loop? It's when you want to do a loop for every iteration of another loop. So for every number here from 0 to 10, we want to count down from that number. So that is what is going on here. And we're going to try to recreate this here. So the first thing, let's focus on the outer for loop. And that is this number here from 0 to 10. And we've done something like that. So that's nothing too crazy. We just say int i equals 0. And we're going to go up to 11. And the reason we're going up to 11 is because it's less than 11, which means it's going to stop at 10. And every time we need to increment i. Now, just for um, just for our own experimentation and for our eyeballs, let's print out this number. It goes from zero to ten. So we got that first number there, and we're on a, we're on a good track. But now, for every single one of those, we need to count down from that number. Well, that number is stored inside of i. Each iteration, the value of i goes up. So that is the number we're going to want to use as one of the inputs in for our, in for, into our next for loop. So let's just uh, comment this out here. Let's create a new for loop. Now, when you have a second for loop, by convention, just like this is typically called i, the, the one for an inner for, for loop is typically called k. And you can name it whatever you want. You can call it tacos if you want. I mean, if, if that's the kind of food you're into, I would much prefer pizza because pizza is objectively a much better food than tacos. I mean, it, it's, it tastes better. It's cheaper. It's probably not healthier, but, you know, it's not terrible. So there's really no argument about whether or not pizza is better than tacos. So, But for the sake of, you know, argument resolution, we're going to use K. And what are we going to set this equal to? Are we going to set it equal to 0? Are we going to set it equal to 11? Oh, I don't know. Well, we're actually going to set it equal to i. And the reason we're going to... Why, why don't we just use i if we're just... Why are we making a copy of i is the question. Because we're going to change k. We're going to start... Like, let's say we're on this one right here. We're going to make k equal to 10. And then we're going to decrement k down to 0. That's how it's going to work. So... As long as k is greater than, I'm going to go greater than or equal to 0. And then what we're going to do is we're going to decrement k. And then we can just print k. OK. Um, and this isn't going to give us quite the right answer, but it's going to be close. And you'll see. Whoa, what is going on there? That is a mess. That's because we need to put a new line in this. But where are we going to put that new line? Well, it depends on what you're trying to do. So if you want that new line after every character, then you're going to put it on the inner loop. So we're going to put it here. Okay, we're getting closer. We are definitely getting closer. The only thing is we're going to put a space there. Or you could even, if you want it to be spaced out more, you could do a tab. There we go. But definitely, like, space is better. So I'm going to go back. There we go. We just copied this exact thing and we recreated it. Hopefully that helps you guys understand inner for loops. This one kind of gives you this jagged edge where it's, or a triangle-like shape. If you wanted it to be a square shape, then you wouldn't want to to base it off of this variable. You would want 
you would want to base it off of something else. So it's kind of hard to explain because we haven't really talked about multidimensional arrays, but in a 2D array, you're basically going to have a table look like structure and the the length that you're going to want to iterate through is going to be the same every every iteration of this loop so you're not going to want to have a dynamic variable that changes each iteration so you'd want it to be like a length of one of the arrays for example um, start it at zero and go up into the length of one of the arrays 